Before Respawn fully designed Catalyst, there was Fatalist. It's like Catalyst, but fat. Fatalist couldn't control ferrofluid, but they could control this $10 magnetic putty. Look how it just follows the magnet. And while Catalyst can give you crystal readings, Fatalist can tell you if you pass the vibe check based on your Apex Legends main. Wraith. Horizon. Mirage. Seer. Pathfinder. Unfortunately, Fatalist won't be coming to Apex, but they will be coming to Apex Legends Mobile Season 18. Fatalist wanted to also let you know that you'll guarantee pass the vibe check if you bought a macro plushie. We sold a good amount of these bad boys, but they are selling out. If you want to be a vibe and a half, click the link in the description down below and get yours today. Catalyst is the 23rd legend in Apex Legends. Her real name is Tressa Crystal Smith. She grew up on Boreas, a planet with a deteriorating moon. She and her friends are super into crystal readings, moon rituals, witchery, and vibes. They're super supportive of her and helped her after she transitioned because Catalyst is the first trans legend in Apex. And I'm glad LGBTQ plus people have representation in the games that they play. Anyways, one of Catalyst's friends, Margo, is not digging the vibes of these moon terraforms crews, so Margo wants to do something about it, and she tries to convince her friends to join her. These two friends, they're not loyal, so they just dip. But Tressa, she's convinced to go. They end up sneaking into the corporate facility that's destroying the moon, but Margo, she's got a bomb. Tressa isn't down for this because, you know, she's got a bomb, but it's too late. Margo gets caught and blows it all up. Tressa manages to escape and decides to run away to the moon, Cleo. There, she ends up joining the terraforming crews to help repair the moon and make it livable, and while doing this, she learns to work with ferrofluid, which is what her whole kit is all about. She finally found a new home on this moon and brought these unloyal friends up to the moon so they can be a family together again. But Silver Pharmaceuticals decided to bring the Apex games to the moon and kicked everybody off the moon. But Catalyst won't go down without a fight and join the Apex games to make enough money to give her and her friends a better life. And also to kill Seer because I guess Seer's a bad guy now. But with this new season, we got a whole new map the Broken Moon! You fight on the moon that Catalyst built, where people used to live, like kids who played hopscotch. Three, three four, four, five, five, six, seven, seven eight, eight, nine, ten. That's hard. Hey! Uh, <laughs> you were actually like really, really spot on. On uh, my screen, it didn't seem close at all. <laughs> <laughs> and where zip rails exist to make third partying even more fun. Yay! If you want an in-depth look at this map, you can check out my previous video showcasing it. Just know that it's a little bit bigger than World's Edge and it's way better than Storm Point. But that's Catalyst in a nutshell. She's got space goo and can see if you pass the vibe check. But now that you know who she is, let's learn how to play her, shall we? Catalyst's first ability is Piercing Spikes. You throw out a patch of ferrofluid that turns into spikes when enemies are near. You have two charges with a cooldown of 25 seconds. These spikes slow enemies and do 15 damage a second. You can have up to three patches at a time, so after you shoot a fourth one, the first one will go away. Also, they won't go away unless you remove it, or somebody destroys it by shooting these spike balls, so you'll find yourself getting damage on people across the map sometimes. This tactical is so good indoors when teams try to push you since it blocks entryways with ease. It's also great for escaping and slowing down enemies chasing you. Enemies behind cover will have no choice but to leave after being glopped all over. You can even shoot it through windows at enemies who think they can hide inside. It won't be the thing that kills your enemies since it's a bit too slow and easy to avoid, but in the right circumstances, it'll help you get a big clutch. No! The goo is also great for thirsting enemies, since they can't really move that easily, so splurge all over knocked enemies. Note that this glop will flop and slide off of angled roofs, so it won't activate until it reaches a flat-ish surface. Also, the tactical is really loud! Her passive is Barricade. You can reinforce doors, making them unopenable by enemies. Is that a word? They can't open it, that's what I meant. It also makes it so it takes four whole melee hits to destroy. Grenades still can blow these up, and abilities still do the same damage to 
doors like Ramparts and Horizons Ultimate. But even if the door is gone, you can rebuild doors. These rebuilt doors can't be opened anymore and must be destroyed by you or an enemy to get through. You can only reinforce two doorways at a time, so once you make a third, the first one just goes back to normal. This passive is so strong, and it's easily the most useful part of her kit. If you or your team is trying to survive and heal, get inside and just lock the door. You can pop off a whole battery for free by the time they break it down. Just don't accidentally block your teammates when doing this. It's super strong during a fight since your team can still open the door, giving you all the power in a 1v1. And if done right, you can essentially trap enemies indoors with nowhere to run. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Her ultimate is Dark Veil. You create a huge wall that blocks the enemy's vision, but not their bullets. If enemies try and cross through it, it will cause them to be super slowed and their vision will be corrupted and sucky. And in black and white. On top of that, it blocks most scanning abilities, like Bloodhound's Tactical, Crypto's Drone, Seer's Tactical, Valkyrie's Ultimate, and Vantage's Passive. It's supposed to block Seer's Ultimate, like in the trailer, but we don't talk about that. The Ultimate is great for pushing enemies safely, or for getting the hell out of there. It's the perfect Ultimate for repositioning. You can cut through the open with this thing. It can go upstairs, up hills, but if it's blocked by walls or terrain, it will just stop just like that. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't use it indoors, it can still be pretty useful. It's also a great tool for sticking a res, or reviving teammates in the open. It's essentially a Valorant wall ability, but in Apex, so all the cool things that you can do with it in Valorant, it can be done here. Since I can also control Ferro Fluid, you better believe that I'm the best catalyst in the world. So listen to these pro tips. Number one, if you accidentally shoot one of your goos and wish you could just like not have done that, you can pick it back up. And as long as no enemy was near it, you'll get the charge back. This will come in handy a lot more than you think. Trust me. I sometimes prematurely goop, okay? It happens. Number two, catalyst can walk right through enemy catalyst ultimates and tacticals, similar to how caustic works. So don't have any fear about running over spikes or or through walls, but your teammates can't do this. So don't make an aggressive push expecting your team to follow you through a wall or over spikes as it might lead to a fat L. Number three, if you feel like an enemy will be trying to come back for their teammates banners, put your tactical goop on their teammates boxes. They won't be able to make noise to shoot the spikes. So odds are you'll do damage to them. Then the chase begins. Ooh, behind me, someone behind. Oh, they got their banners They're behind me. He's trying to run against banners. This move is insane. I can't, I can't keep up with that. Number four, Rampart, Caustic, and Watson all pair extremely well with Catalyst, as she is the queen of holding down buildings with her passive. Okay, maybe the princess, because Watson is definitely the queen still, but you get what I mean. Her ability to barricade doors in combination with traps or Rampart walls can lead to some annoying camping scenarios, or dare I say, bunker <laughs> scenarios. Bunker boys, bunker party, bunker boys, bunker party, bunker... Overall, Catalyst is a fun addition to the game with a super unique kit designed to counter the most annoying aspect of this game, scanning. Does she do it well? Uh, time will tell. But how is she for noobs? For noobs, I would say that Catalyst is medium difficulty to play. Her tactical is a little tricky to shoot correctly and knowing when to use her ultimate will be the key to success. So noobs will need to practice this. But what do you think? Have you played Catalyst? And if so, would you say she's easy to play, hard to play? Do you think she's overpowered and needs nerfs or underpowered and needs buffs? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I gotta clean up all that like black goopy stuff that I was using earlier. So uh, I'll catch you later, ya noob.